What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I am a diehard, 100% all-in Dallas Cowboy uh, fan here. I, I've loved the Dallas Cowboys. I've been there, you know, back in, you know, I'm, I'm old. Back in the 60s, as a little kid growing up, you know, my dad, not even knowing what football was and really just wondering when the next lollipop was coming. But my dad would always say, go Cowboys, go Cowboys. And so I was like, go Cowboys, go Cowboys. And it's been stuck. Sometimes I wish I wasn't such a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan because it hurts that much when they don't hold up to our expectations. And I know that I'm not the only one that's out there. And see, here's the thing. I, I feel like YouTube is evolving rather quickly. YouTube is now the wild, wild west. And now all these new prospectors are coming in and things. And they're trying to push all of us aside. But see, there have been people that have been here for a long, long time that have been putting in the work. And it's my duty to make sure that you get to know each and every one of you, one of them. And I want to introduce my man, Duke Bothers. Duke Bothers. What's up, man? How are you doing? Man, I am doing well. How about you? Um, I'm, I'm kind of liking some things I'm hearing from the Cowboys, but, you know, I'm kind of reserved at the moment. Um, any day that I wake up and I'm still alive is always a good day for me. So I'm, I'm doing good. Sure. I can agree with that. I'm, I'm with you as far as the Cowboys news goes, man. You know, following this team as long as I have. You know, my, my YouTube channel began uh, September 11, 2006. So this Wow, is September 11. Okay. Year. Yeah, it's kind of a weird day to start a channel. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I actually followed uh, Shango way back in the day, and I mm -hmm. thought, man, I want to do what he does. He was a big inspiration for me, and so I just hit the record button, and next thing you know, I'm doing it almost every week. And uh, But as far as the Cowboys go, man, I, I'm seeing a lot of smoke screens right now, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I've seen that for a little while, um, especially when it comes to the draft. I think right around draft time, that's when the Cowboys start saying, hey, we're interested in this guy. We're interested in that guy. You know, that kind of creates a frenzy mm -hmm. for all the other teams going, well, that's my guy. What do I got to do to get him? We got to make sure the Cowboys yeah. don't trade up and try to get him. So I'm seeing a lot of smoke screens as far as the draft goes. But, you know, like you said, being a Cowboys fan, it's there's never a dull moment. It's always exciting. So. This is that time of year for me. It's when it gets really exciting. Well, you know, the thing is with, with Jerry, you know, Jerry, when Jimmy was going into the Hall of Fame, you know, he was, you know, he seemed very contrite, you know, kind of, you know, I, I, I effed it up and everything else. I'm going to put Jimmy Johnson in, in the Hall of Fame. And, and then last year, you know, as the GM, you know, you can't fire yourself when you're the owner and stuff. And I have to do better and I will do better. And then we proceed to do what we did last year with, you know, James Washington, um, Dante Fowler, and uh, the fullback, I, I can't, uh, Ryan Null. That was our big free agent moves, you know, and you got rid of Amari Cooper, you know, you got rid of Lyle Collins, you got rid of Connor Williams, and you didn't try to replace those in kind. And it's kind of like, I thought you said you were going to be doing better. You know, and I felt like they really bullshitted us with the whole thing of, well, you can't sign players because there's no money. Your mic's muted. There you yeah, go. No, okay. you're good. That's 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 true. I remember when when Jerry first uh, made the decision to buy the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a press conference there, and he said, "You know, I'm here now, and we're going to win." And that's the end of it. He said, "That's the expectation that we're going to win." There's yeah. his quote was, "There is no substitution for winning." Right. And you could tell that when Jerry has that fire in his eyes, when he's got that passion. He's going to make something happen. That's the kind of person Jerry is. You know, I've known him personally for a long time, and that's just the kind of fire that he has. But it seems like as of late, again, it's been a lot of smoke screens. Like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna win. We're gonna do our best. But as you said, mm -hmm. we're not gonna go bring in any free agents. And you look at you look at what the last two Super Bowl teams have done. They've brought in people. Not you know, just the, the not brand. just the last ones. You got to think about even when the Eagles they were the first one really to kind of go out there and do a whole lot of trades in 2017. You know, they went with Miami and got, uh, I can't remember, the uh, Jay Ajay, the running back and stuff. Yep. They went through and they kind of started doing that and bringing in a lot of different players and stuff and getting on there. Of course, you know, Tampa Bay did and the Rams did. And, of course, they did too this year. So it's kind of like 
That's the new way of doing business. And Jerry seems to be stuck on stupid with, you know, we can just draft our way out of it, but we don't have a Herschel Walker trade to give us all these extra picks. Now, I have to applaud him. The, we, we do better than anybody else in drafting. You know, in comparison to, say, the Eagles, who the last great first-round draft pick they had was Lane Johnson. They've been pretty much, you know, on bus territory with just about everybody out there. Now, uh, Devontae Smith, um, I mean, Devontae, um, God, damn, their other wide receiver, their first-round pick. Um, he's been pretty good. And we'll see about Jordan Davis, but you look at everything else in there, they're not good. But it's just like we do 90% of it, we just won't do that last 10% to get us over the hump. Yeah. Now, do you think we should believe any of this shit that we're hearing right now? I'm, I'm not, I, I always reserve my judgment until after the preseason starts as far as believing anything that comes out of the front office because mm -hmm. I've seen this too many times. I remember when... You know, around this time of year, we had this free agent receiver card called Terrell Owens, mm -hmm. and Jerry was adamant. I don't want anything to do with that man. He is oh, not joining yep. the team, period. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, T.O.'s wearing Dallas Cowboys color scoring touchdowns. So anything they tell me right now, I'm not inclined to believe. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm sorry. I've been there. I've done that. Oh I, God! I, uh, I when I, when I started my YouTube channel, I I was in Missouri, and Missouri is called the Show Me State. It so Jerry ain't showed you. Actually, show me. I don't believe it. Not a word. You know the thing that's crazy is because you know we as fans get pissed off at the end of the year. I mean, it, it's heartbreaking losing again to the Forty ers in the playoffs, and you know everybody's going through, well, we should have been in the Super Bowl and stuff. But if you think back to last year, what they said about this team, you know, where we most people didn't think we were going to be even a playoff team, much less anything more than 500. But somehow, by the time the season gets here, the expectations get turned up that this is a Super Bowl caliber team. I dare say that when you think about Buffalo, Buffalo, they kept going through, and you looked at, you know, Josh Allen is, you know, that guy and this, that, and the other. It almost pissed me off. I'm a Dak fan. I, you, know, you know, I know not everybody is or not. But, you know, they keep saying, well, Dak Prescott's got to have everything perfect to win. Well, doesn't everybody? Doesn't every? I mean, I didn't see Josh Allen win the Super Bowl, and he had some really good people working with. I, I saw Jalen Hurts with a lot of great pieces, best offensive line in football, two playmaking receivers, a great tight end, a great running game. He didn't win. So this whole narrative of, you know, you have to have everything perfect. Well, I don't see anybody out there win the Super Bowl by themselves other than maybe Pat Mahomes, but Pat Mahomes gets helped by the officials. Yep, absolutely. And you're not going to find a bigger Chiefs hater on YouTube than me. I hate the Chiefs more than, more than doing taxes. I hate them that much. Oh, man, but, don't remind me about taxes. Yeah, yeah that's around the corner here. Well, but when it comes to winning Super Bowls, you have to have the complete team. And when I say complete team, I don't mean you have to have like 96 overall players on every position of the organization. Mm -hmm. but you have to have guys that are going to go in and they understand what their role is. They're going to do their jobs and they're not going to do anything to the detriment of the team. And one thing that I've really noticed about the Cowboys that gives me a lot of hope is, you know, I watched this team just a few short years ago with a defense that was ran by Mike Nolan. And mm -hmm. it was oh, God. A joke. You know, people don't realize how bad that defense was. Oh, that defense was oh, historically God. terrible. And we are, what, three years removed now from that defense? And we're looking at Dan Quinn as one of the best defenses Duke, in the league. I would say top three easily, just Duke, like that. that. Watching that defense hurt my soul. Oh, man. Okay, I, I played nose tackle in college, okay? You know, Charles Haley, you know, was – on my team at JMU and watching the tackling, the poor pursuit angles, the tech, the, I, it was just like, how do you guys make it to the NFL? It was just flat out disgusting. And I'm just like, I can't believe it. It's this bad. And it literally, everybody just looked like they checked out. That's literally night and day difference from Mike Nolan to Dan Quinn. I think actually that was the biggest move we made last off season was keeping Dan Quinn, you know, but going into last season, I, I pretty much all of the things that we looked at and thought that the team was going to be hurting was wide receiver 
Everybody had doubts except for Jerry Jones, who tried to sell us on, you know, Jalen Tolbert. He's going to be great. You know, that third round pick, you know, you're not going to think about Amari Cooper. They overestimated Michael Gallup coming back from ACL. And there really wasn't anybody else. And, uh, you know, Noah Brown, he did good for what he is. But too many times he was Clifford Franklin. Mm -hmm. And so we all looked at this because I remember being at training camp with law and stuff. And we're like, man, we're in trouble with wide receivers. And linebacker was another one. You know, Van Der Esch played well. But again, Van Der Esch, you never know when he's going to miss time. That was another one of our concerns. And the offensive line. And. You know, lo and behold, there's Tyron Smith getting hurt. What do you feel about Tyron Smith? Now, they're already on with, you know, saying that he's going to come back. And I started looking at his cap number. You know, it's $17 million for this year. Next year is actually a voidable year. They could restructure and kind of spread that money out between the 17 this year and what uh, 4 million bonus and just basically make it about eight this year and say, we'll bite the bullet next year and keep him for an insurance policy. Sounds like they want to do that. I'm worried about Terrence Steele. What do you feel about Tyron Smith? Are you ready to move on? Well, the thing about Tyron is that he's not like ancient yet. He's 32. Yeah. He's not old, old, but he's got the body of a 50 year old. So yeah, I, I don't thing? see the same Tyron Smith that I saw even, you know, four years ago, five mm-hmm. years ago. Uh, I see some regression there, but like you said, if you don't have Tyron, just assuming and you don't have, you know, Jason Peters, which I don't really know much about at this point, but if you don't have those guys, you're really going to have to rely on a guy like Terrence Steele or, you know, that you're going to have to use some draft capital or again, go out and get someone because we, we are going to be in a massive need at tackle. Mm-hmm. I think in my opinion, that is where the problems at wide receiver kind of start. Mm-hmm. Because quarterback you don't needs time. Your quarterback running around for his life, trying to throw a football, and we see Dak do that too many times. And there are two different. I say this on my live streams all the time. Mm-hmm. There are two different versions of Dak. There's the Dak that runs around scared as hell, yeah. And then there's the Dak with ice in his veins. Mm-hmm. And we saw in Tampa the ice Dak, the Dak that wasn't being pursued and chased on every play. right. And then San Francisco, we saw the terrified Dak. Mm-hmm. So. I'm with you. The first thing to do is shore up the offensive line. And I, right now, I'll say this. I would be okay if Tyron Smith was not a part of that. If mm-hmm. I was him, I'd honestly probably hang it up now because you want to have a future with your family and, you know, do some other things without mm-hmm. having your body breaking down. So, yeah, I, I, I will say with reservation, I'm out on keeping Tyron Smith. But if he wants to stay and can stay, I won't be disappointed. I'll put it that way. Yeah. You know, the thing with the Cowboys to me is always, usually they worry about the sizzle more than the substance. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you think about, it, cause it's like, you know, do we keep Zeke and do we keep Tony Pollard and everything else? And even when we got like T.O. and we had Tony Romo, the offensive line was always an afterthought, you know, and still the interior defensive line is still kind of an afterthought. But see, everything to me starts from those two. I would rather have a great offensive line and average running backs than having great running backs and an average offensive line. And it seems like that's always been kind of bass backwards. The one time that we were focused in on that when we were worried about Tony Romo being able to stay upright and we got Tyron Smith and Travis Frederick and Zach Martin, and it paid dividends for this team. We were able to do so much, but course of the last five years the offensive line has just gone downhill from the time travis fredericks got the hillian bars uh, disease it's just been kind of to the point where we're below average in my mind and i think they really and truly need to build on this um would you you know we, we've got the stephen jones philosophy of don't spend money mm-hmm You know, we don't want to kick money down the road and everything else. You know, we don't want to go for a one-hit, one-year wonder. Are you on board with that, or are you more on board of saying, we need to try and win now, and we need to go ahead and restructure these guys and get some help in free agency? One problem that the Cowboys have had, not over the past year or two, but just recently in recent memory, is the whole we like our guys bit. Oh, yeah. We're just going to hang on to who we've got. Mm Mm-hmm. 
it's worked out in a couple of situations, but in other situations, it's like, why are we paying these guys so much money and they're underproducing? Like, I, Simus is going to kill me for this. Uh oh. I was never the biggest Jalen Smith fan. Couldn't stand him. I thought mm-hmm. we overpaid him way too much. And it, it just, yeah. just as an example of some guys that the Cowboys like to pay money to and hang on to. Oh, we've had too many. Um, if it's if it's me, this this might be a hot take, but when it comes to the running back situation, especially, I love Zeke. I always have. I'm mm-hmm. a huge Zeke fan. I supported Zeke all year long. When you know there are other people that said, "Hey, Pollard should be our number one. Zeke should be our number two. It goes back to the whole conversation of you have to know what your role is as a mm-hmm. running back. But um, I'm ready. I'm ready for Zeke to go. I really am. I love him. He's done a great job here, but. You know, that's money that we can use elsewhere. And then yeah. Pollard, if if we don't bring Pollard back again, I won't be too awful disappointed because to your point, you can bring in some solid running backs, even in this draft class. If you build the offensive line first, you can bring any running back you want in here and they should mm-hmm. be able to produce, I would think. But I would rather see us be a little more aggressive as far as spending goes. And there, there are pr- plenty of high profile free agents out there that could really help our team. Not named Odell Beckham Jr. <laughs> oh my God, I I really don't want Odell. No, I'm good. Uh, you know, because that's that's the can. He's too me 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 me. I mean, it's like dealing with Aaron Rodgers with you know, that, and that's a whole story in itself. Now, here's what's interesting. Like I said, I've been on the road most of the day, so I still really haven't caught up with everything. But I think I saw a piece from Mike McCarthy who was kind of you know he was complimentary of Kellen Moore as he was throwing him under the bus. It's kind of like when you say you know I don't mean any disrespect and then they go on and disrespect you and what they're saying. And he was talking. I thought I saw him talking about running the ball more. Am I wrong on that? Because that's not really unless he's gotten older and changed his ways. That hasn't been his philosophy. Mm-mm. before because i think we ran the ball about 45 percent of the time we were actually pretty balanced for the most part that has not been mike mccarthy's mo running is kind of like usually an afterthought right. which is one of the reasons why i look at it and say i don't see them necessarily bringing zeke back because if mike mccarthy is calling plays and setting this offense that running back is not quite as important as him wanting to throw the football sure and I, I agree with that. I had not heard that either. And that, that would be a surprise to me as well. But like you said, I when, when McCarthy won his Super Bowl, I'll be honest with you, as much as I love football, mm-hmm. uh, I couldn't tell you who his running back was off the top of my head. I could look it up. You could probably say that about almost any year that he's been uh, with Green Bay. It, mm-hmm. you, the running back is not a big part. And the thing is, is if you – Look at, you know, right now, we're talking about the Titans are talking about getting rid of Derrick Henry. I don't know if Barkley, if Saquon is going to get, you know, he turned down $12 million for the Giants. I don't know that he's going to get $12 million out on the, the streets now. Uh, Leonard Fournette was just released. And seeing what the Eagles did with young guys, seeing what Kansas City has done with no names, and understanding that usually by year number four, you've hit your peak as a running back. I don't know that people are going to be going and saying, we need a big name running back. Just draft a guy in the, you know, third, fourth, fifth round, you know, use them up and, you know, toss them away or do running back by committee. Yeah. I think we've seen that here recently over the past few years, teams just aren't looking at veteran running backs and saying, I need to spend money on that guy. Even if it is, you know, look at these names, Derek Henry, Saquon Barkley, I don't see anybody just jumping out of their shoes to go get those guys because Mm -hmm. you don't want to pay the kind of money they're asking for as aged running backs when, like you said, you just go draft somebody. And that's kind of the way I am too. You know, that's money you can spend elsewhere. And, you know, we're, I just said, don't do the whole, we like our guys bit, but we got a lot of guys to, to look after here. I mean, we're going to have CD coming up. We're going to have Trayvon coming up, you know, Micah. It's going to mm-hmm. be a big one, so we're going to have to spend a lot of money here pretty soon. It's kind of a, a yeah. good balance this year. Well, we we heard uh, one of the things they said today was they're they're open to getting ready to do uh, CD's contract as well as Diggs and things. Yeah. Now they can, you know, the thing Cowboys usually do with their contracts are they make that first year really team friendly and kick the you know the, the ball down the road a bit, so they could give themselves a little bit of cap room that way if they want to at least in the short term figuring that the salary cap is going to continue to go up exponentially with all the new money coming in but yeah mike mccarthy is literally saying that he wants to run the football more 
Your quarterback ha- um, has to be able to throw the ball 45 times in a game to win. Um, you can't win a championship in this league if your guys can't have the capability to do that. But having to do that every week, it's fun. It's fun as hell to call those plays, but it's not the best thing for your team. Time of possession goes to hell. Risk for turnovers goes up. We've got to secure the ball better, and we need to be a top five team in the league. And that's a skill. And that comes from the lead guy in the room. You got to emphasize that. You got to be uh, be that with an everyday deal. So he's recognized that you know we can't throw the ball all the time like that. You're gonna his arm's gonna fall off. But you do risk the biscuit. But that hasn't really been his mo in his career. That's where I'm kind of like, did I really hear that today? Or am I crazy? <laughs> That's, that's a bit of a shock coming from him. I see his point, though. I mean, you know, it, when you do have a good established running game, that's what you're doing is you're establishing time of possession. You're wearing out defenses. And one thing we need that, that I think we need is to do that to other teams to wear their defenses out because our fresh defense against anybody's worn out defense in the league, I think we win that matchup 100% of the time. But mm-hmm. the opposite end of that is if you're not, if you're smoke screening again, if you do continue to want to pass you know, 65% of the yeah. time, do we, we have to evaluate, do we have the system in place to do that right now? I mean, is Dak well, the guy that can do that? Are the receivers the guys that can do that? If you're doing the West coast offense and you're using the passing game as elongated handoffs, you're using more screen plays, getting Tony Pollard, the ball in space, you know, then you're okay. Cause you're kind of saying, well, it's really like an elongated run. It's not really like a pass. You know what I mean? Then I can understand that because that's kind of what the West Coast is predicated on is getting the ball in the playmaker's hands more quickly and where they can make some moves. And that's one of the things with Kellen Moore, so many comeback routes, so many stop routes and stuff. It's like every time our guys catch the ball, they're pretty much stopped, you know, and they're not getting any yards after contact. I want to see guys be able to make some moves. I'd like to see a guy like Turpin on a screen outside and see if he can get the ball in space and make some moves, you know, throughout and do some other things. But, um, you know, it's we're gonna have to wait and see. It's it's kind of fun because we got the combine this week, uh, starting tomorrow, and we can look at and dream about some of these different players. The only way I think we'll know if the Cowboys are actually serious is if they actually make a free agent move, a real free agent move in the first two weeks. Yeah, absolutely, and I I would love to see it. I'm I've been going through the numbers to see who that free agent might be. And I haven't really sold myself on anyone in mm-hmm. particular just yet, but that's what really other than the Herschel Walker trade, that's what brought success here was when we looked at Dion and said, let's pay the money. Let's bring him in. Yep. And that, you know, that and Charles Haley and Charles Haley. Yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> yeah. So but we before, before we get out of here, tell everybody about your channel and where to find you. Yo, I am at the great Duke Bothers. You can find me there on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, it's, I've been around since 2006. I was a member of the original CNS, and uh, mm-hmm. I just have a passion for the team. I really do. I love the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I try to do as many videos and live streams as I can, but you know, I at the end of the day, man, I, I bleed blue and silver. Mm-hmm. I've, I'm a cowboy for life, and uh, I'm always going to be here representing, man. And um, like you, I grew up as a Dallas Cowboys fan, my dad sat me in front of a TV during the nineties and said, look at these boys. And I was like, I'm hooked. That's it. I'm good. Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, it's been, it's been a dream come true ever since. Uh, just this last year, I had the pleasure of taking my boy Simus per invitation from Jerry Jones. We sat in the owner's club and we were on the side nice. and had a heck of a time. And uh, the ride just keeps getting more and more exciting as the years go by. And, mm-hmm. My, I've said it, and I'll say it again. I'm not going to even consider going away from YouTube or deleting my channel until my boys win another ring. So I'm here for the long run, maybe until I'm 90, maybe many no, people don't, come in don't here and make videos. Look, you, don't say that because I'll be dead and gone. I'm so much older <laughs> than you are, dog. We've got to get another one. You know, my dad is uh, 85 years old, and every year it's like, are we going to get this thing done before I go? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Dad, we got to. We got to. Yeah. But I said, Dad, you ain't going anywhere anytime soon. So we got plenty of time. That's right. But uh, I appreciate you, man. Now, everybody, definitely check out the great Duke Bothers. Um, and uh, definitely, he's got a whole lot of knowledge here that you definitely want to get a part of. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>